In this video, I'm going to explain four essential components that I believe must be in place for any successful math teaching program for students in years K to 6. G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Professor Peach Classroom and welcome. So these are my own thoughts, my own approach to teaching mathematics. I hope that you find it useful. The first and most important component of a successful math program in my view is have a system for teaching number facts for memorization. So I think there is no question every student needs to know their number facts off by heart. By number facts we're referring to addition, subtraction, multiplication and division facts starting with the single digits. So addition 0 plus 0 to 9 plus 9, subtraction the inverses of those, multiplication 0 times 0 to 9 times 9 and division the inverses of those. Your curriculum will tell you, of course, by which age your students should know that, but if your students are beyond that age and they still don't know them off by heart, then I believe there's no question you need to put in place a system and approach to develop memorization of those number facts right now, before you do anything else. Because without those uh, memorized facts, students won't be able to understand the topics that come after that, that rely on that. More than any other subject, I think you'll agree, mathematics, success requires that you understand the previous steps. So at whatever level you're learning the mathematics, if you missed a step, if you were away the week they taught fractions, you may never have really understood fractions. I've met people like that. Um, and it, it, it just illustrates the fact that you have to keep up and you have to understand all the steps. And to me, number facts is just a bedrock foundation that is essential for everyone who's going to be successful at mathematics. The second essential component is to use a pedagogy, a teaching approach that is based on understanding. I think there are two main approaches to teaching mathematics. One is to say, um, I will teach you the procedures. I'll teach you how to follow the steps, how to follow the routines. You don't need to understand it, just follow the steps, learn how to reproduce what I'm doing and you'll, you know, you'll be successful. The other approach which I'm recommending, of course, is that the students understand what they're doing so that the steps that they're learning in the routines and procedures make sense so they can think in their minds, oh, I see how that works, it's because of this and this and this and this connection and that connection and they can make sense of what they're doing as they learn it. So we're not waiting for some future payoff where students will one day maybe understand what they're doing but they need to understand it right now in my view. So my approach in teaching mathematics is start there. Do you understand? I want you to understand the very first step. Which leads on to the third essential component and that is to use some sort of cycle based on helping students to understand. My cycle has five steps to it, yours may be different, but I start with an illustration. So I don't start with the symbols, I don't draw some symbols on the board and say here what does this mean? But I draw a picture of something. Often a, a, a diagram, if it's fractions or something, I'll draw a circle with regions dividing off or um, something similar and say to students, what does this mean? So the second phase of this is ask questions. Ask lots of questions. When have you seen this before? When have you heard people talking about this? What does it mean? How do you write it down? How do you say it? In other words, what do you know about it? When have you heard this topic mentioned when an adult is doing cooking? or shopping or watching sport on TV, you know, just make some connections uh, right there. Then of course there's explanations, so at some point the teacher will start to directly teach the topic. This is what this means, this is how we do this, this is why we write it this way. And of course all these things will, I'm being a bit vague, but it will depend on the precise topic as to what exactly you teach. Then give practice, of course we give students just one example to start with or two move around the room, see how they're going, get a sense for how the students are coping with the task, come back to the whiteboard, give them some more explanation, give them some more examples, more structure, more scaffolding, all those things that teachers do every day. And then the last phase is to reinforce that learning. So we use homework, we get parents to help if possible, we revise topics the following day and so on. So we don't let something just sit there and hope that it just sticks, but of course, and math curricula all do this and math textbooks and so on. There's a whole lot of revision, um, but I'm suggesting that you make that an automatic part of the cycle that you use in teaching. 
And the fourth essential component I've already alluded to, and that is make connections to real life, both real life for the students at the age they are now, but also real life in their future lives. I think most students have bought into the fact that education is important for them personally and they want to succeed. They want to get a job, they maybe want to go to university, they may have picked out a career or maybe not. They want to you know, buy a house, buy a car, be able to make money in, you know, for various purposes. We need to help students understand why mathematics is part of that future, that they will be more successful, they'll have more fun they will just feel better about everything if they're able to do the mathematics. So at every turn, if at all possible, I would try to connect the mathematics that we're learning. So if it's fractions and we've drawn symbols and diagrams and pictures, we'll relate that to cooking or doing sport or shopping or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. All the different um, relevant real life uh, applications for the math that we can think of so that we can answer the question, hopefully the students can start to answer it for themselves, when am I ever going to use this? That shouldn't be a question that just sits on the table and the teacher sort of fudges it and says, oh well, you know, one day this will be important. I think it's our duty to make sure students see those connections um, as they go all the way through uh, the, the process and all the way through their education in mathematics. So that's it, four essential components for every successful math program. I'm speaking rather quickly. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Now, if you've come here via a search, you just happened to land on this page, then I invite you to put your name and email in this box over here. And that will just put you in a simple email sequence and I'll send you emails about future videos in this series. There are four videos, it's not a great long series, but I hope that you'll come back and watch the remaining videos in this series. If you came here after downloading sample resources or some sort of free pack from our website, profpeat.com, then you're already in a sequence. I mean, you can fill in the box if you're not sure, but I will definitely email everybody I can about what's coming next and so on. The next video in this series is how to teach number facts in 10 weeks. I think you're really going to find that useful. I believe you can teach number facts to a whole class of students and achieve success with every single student with the right sort of support from home and family, of course, uh, but with a, a, a systematic approach, as I said in this video, um, I believe you and your students can be successful in just 10 weeks.